I am so excited to be in front of you all on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Doc. To Journey Ministries, Lord have mercy. Y'all don't know. I'm going to get this out. I know I sound a little nasally. I've been sick all week. Amen. The, the, the flu has been rampant in my household, but God allowed me to study, and God placed a word in my belly, and I wasn't going to shrink back, but I was going to keep on running until my change came, amen? And so, to Journey Ministries, for the program that you all put on today, hallelujah. Praise God. For the youth that stood up and sang. Did you see the young man that got up and sang? That brother pushed it out. Yeah. Yeah, it was fantastic. So I am very, very thankful to the youth for, for, for asking me to come and preach on today. And I have a word from the Lord. Amen. Uh, it's, it's interesting because they came out and they look so beautiful up there. And I have a word that's going to challenge them. So y'all pray for me because that's what we're supposed to do. Amen. To my pastor, uh, for the opportunity, I do not take lightly. Um, to sit in front of this holy desk and in front of this awesome congregation. Um, I'm nervous because I know he's going to give me a critique after this because he's my homiletics professor, amen? Being my homiletics professor, the exegetical work has to be correct or he will tell me behind closed doors. And so I'm thankful to the Restoration family. God bless you and I love you all. And then to the two pretty ladies that are sitting to my left and to y'all's right, to my daughter and my wife, my backbone. Amen. I love her. I love her. And that's one of the reasons why my heart is filled with praise. Y'all playing. Y'all playing. Y'all playing. God gave me much more than just to help me. Amen. She helps make me better. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, please go to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 12, I'll simply be reading verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I'm going to read the text, and then I'm going to give you my title, then we'll pray, and we're going to walk into this word today. Is that all right? Amen, amen. Again, it's the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. When you have it, if you let me know by saying amen. amen. Hallelujah, y'all got there quick. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. I'm reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible, and the word reads as thus. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight. Somebody say every weight. And sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joys that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Beloved, pray with me on today as we consider the title, Don't Stop Running. Amen to the youth that are on my left. I want to say to you today, don't stop running. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come under the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. God, thanking you that your presence is here. God, you met us here. God, we brought you with us. God, we thank you for what you are doing inside of this Youth Sunday. God, allow there to be power and anointing that comes out of this service. God, speak to a young person on today, God, and let them know, God, that you have something miraculous for them, God. God, we thank you on today. Now, God, I thank you in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would sit me down right now and that the real preacher would stand up. God, for when Jesus comes, lives are saved. God, when Jesus comes, we are redeemed. God, when Jesus this comes, we are made better. So, Father, we turn it over to you. Tell you, have thine own way. We give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. It is in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Let everyone here under the sound of my voice say amen. Amen, amen and amen, beloved. God bless you. Uh, the text that we are walking into today is a familiar text. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, written uh, by the author of Hebrews. Most people don't know who the author of Hebrews is, and I don't either. Amen. And so... <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm just, I'm just the best exegetical background work I can give you as it relates to that. Some think it might have been Paul, but the Greek's not all the way right. Some people think it might have been Peter, but there are things in it that don't look like Peter. So therefore, it's anonymous as we see it. Amen. 
All right. And so as we walk into this particular 12th chapter of Hebrews, uh, we see the author giving instruction. Amen. He's given instruction as it relates to the race that we are running in life. Do any of you all recall ever being in a race? Uh, oh, okay, let, 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 me, let me mess with you a little bit. When I, when I was growing up as a little boy, amen, we, I grew up in Park Hill. Um, and we would, you know, we'd go outside and all my friends, somebody shouted, that's all right. Um, <laughs> all my friends would come outside, you know, we, we'd go outside and, and everybody wanted to race, amen, because we wanted to know who was the baddest on the block. We wanted to know who was the fastest out there. You know, I always thought I was the fastest. Some of y'all in here thought you were the fastest, amen. And we would go outside and, you know, uh, we didn't have, you know, all, all the real nice stuff, so it was just somebody saying on your mark, get, get set. And right, 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 right. And so, you know, some of us thought we were special because, you know, we watched a little TV pastor back then. Carl Lewis was a major track star. And so, you know, some of us would get down, you know what I mean? He'd say, on oh, your mark, we look at the brother. <laughs> right? And if somebody tried to get an advantage, right, because you'd be in your stance like this, somebody else would get down like, man, I take track. I ain't. <laughs> and he'd say, get set. Go, right? And, and, and you run, and you run, and, and the point was to see who was the fastest sprinter. Amen? Yeah, yeah. And, and I declare to you on today that, that in my neighborhood, I thought I was the fastest sprinter. I don't remember losing a race. If it happened, I'm not going to tell you. So as it relates to right now, and I'm preaching, yeah. huh? Yeah. I was the fastest on my block. But it was a sprint. It didn't last very long. And it didn't require a whole lot. All it required was for me to have a little bit of speed. Then I move on into high school, and I still think I have a little bit of uh, uh, speed in me. And so I decided to get on the track team. Amen. Some of y'all here ran track. Uh, and, and, and my coach said to me, he said, Rashid, I don't want to just recognize you as a sprinter. And I looked at him and said, no, you tripping. That's what I do. I'm a sprinter. I'm a thoroughbred. That's what I'm supposed to do. He said, no, I want to see if you can run, with, run some distance. I said, I said, okay. He said, yeah, I, I, I want to see if you have stamina. I want to see if you have endurance. I want to see if there's a little bit more in you than just that quick sprinting mentality. And I, I said, you know what? I'm up for it. Let's go ahead and do it. Now, 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 I'm going to stop for a second. I'm not talking about a mile. No, I'm not talking about a quarter mile. That's, that, yeah, that is cross the country. That's cross country. I'm talking about distance, so it was a 400 in my book. Amen. <laughs> Whatever, that's fine, it doesn't bother me, it's fine, this, this is my race, okay, we'll get to everybody else's stuff. Uh, running the 400, right, so I'm running the 400, young people, some of y'all in here have run the 400 before, I, being a sprinter, thought I could start out, you know, just a little jog, get into it a little bit, no, they start sprinting at the beginning, Right? Now here's, now here's what a lot of us look like. I'm just saying, they start sprinting in the beginning. So for the first hundred, I'm good. I'm sprinting. I'm getting with everybody. Uh, uh, getting it. Get to the 200. I'm still good. I got 200 in me. I can still do that. I hit the curve, Pastor. Turn my head like this. Come on, young people. Some of y'all run track. You have to turn your head like this because it helps you on the curve. Get up around it. Some of y'all been in some curves in your life and you haven't learned to turn your head. I'm just saying... Glory to God. So I hit the curve, and then, Pastor, I got to the 300. Lord have mercy, I got to the 300, and my lungs start burning. Some of y'all know what it feels like. Lungs start burning. It didn't feel right. It didn't feel right. Um, then my legs got wobbly on me. My legs got wobbly. And then y'all know the last thing happens. I got cotton mouth, and I couldn't breathe. And so... <laughs> Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm looking at the finish line. But something on the inside of me is going, I, I, I don't know if I can make it. I, I don't think I have enough left on the inside of me to finish this race. I'm not sure with my legs wobbling and my chest burning and my mouth not being able to breathe if I can make it to the finish line. And I submit to you today that the author of this text is telling you, keep on running. Just because there's a trial. Just because there's a tribulation. Just because something has come up in your life that's saying, you know what? I'm sick of being in the race. Don't give up. Don't stop running. Let's look at the text, verse 1. <laughs> it says, therefore, 
since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. I got to put a pin right there so you understand. He starts the verse with the word therefore. By using the word therefore, he is letting you know or letting us know that he has completed a thought and he is now moving on to a level of instruction based off of what he just told us. Amen. And so when we see the word therefore, the first thing we need to do is find out what is therefore. And so we got to go back to chapter 11. Amen. You can go back there with me. I, I, I've done enough exegetical work to where I can go ahead and give you a little bit of a brief synopsis as it relates to that particular chapter in this Bible. In chapter 11, it is called the Heroes of Faith. Amen. You all are familiar with it or, 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 or the Hall of Faith. Pastor, let me open up my notes before I run on and see what the end going to be without knowing where I want to go. Amen. So, so we, 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 we look back at chapter 11 and and it's called the Hall of Faith or the Heroes of Faith. And I believe the, the, the verse, the, the, the chapter starts by saying, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and, 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 and the evidence of things not seen. And then he goes on to give us all kind of examples of what faith is. He says, by faith, Abraham uh, uh, left his mother and his father's house, not knowing where he was going, somebody in here, not knowing where he was going, but by faith, he obeyed what God said and it was counted to him as righteousness. I believe somewhere in there he talks about Noah, where it says, by faith, a brother that had never seen rain before built an ark in the desert and was commended for it by faith. Moses led the people out and parted the Red Sea by faith. He gives an awesome list, uh, what commentators would call an example list of people that should give us encouragement as it relates to the race that we are now running in our lives. Does that make sense? It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, the most interesting thing to me as it relates to chapter 11 that messes with me a little bit is when I talk to people and we talk about the hall of faith and we talk about Abraham and we talk about David and we talk about Samson. They look at you and say, but preacher, I am no hero. My God. Very tough to look at this text and say to yourself, but I'm not that. That that's not in me, Amen. I, 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 I'm, I'm no hero preacher. God doesn't have anything miraculous for me to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Young people, sometimes that's the way we feel. We look at the pioneers of faith. We look at the, the heroes of faith. And the problem is we look at ourselves and say, but peace, preacher, I don't have x-ray vision. I don't have super strength, so how can I do what they did? How does their race connect to my race? And I'm here to tell you today that they were ordinary people and that God has something miraculous for you to do. Oh, come on, stay with me, young people. I know there's a dream on the inside of every last one of y'all with a black T-shirt on that looks like me on today. There's a dream on the inside of you. There's a purpose. There's a passion. And you must understand that God has called you exactly for that. There is something miraculous on the inside of you. Uh, 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 the, the only difference uh, as it relates to these people is that they obeyed what God said, even though they may not have seen the promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them were able to receive the promise. Yeah. Abraham and, ba and, and Sarah saw the baby. But Abraham didn't see us. substance of things hoped for and evidence of things that may not yet be seen. We got to understand that in this race, it's not promised that we're going to see it. But the point is, is that we must not stop running. Amen. Let's walk it out. Let's walk it out. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also there's a, there's, a, there's a piece in there I'm going to go back to. Let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely. Beloved, let me say something to you on today, and now you understand why I got this little bitty backpack on. It really is weight. It's jacking with my back because it's too small. Amen. But as it relates to weight and sin in our lives, a lot of us look like me up here on this stage. We walk around with our backpack on. See, 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 no, 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 stay with me. See, it says lay aside every weight. Let us also lay aside every weight. When you look at it saying let us also, it means to tell you that when you're looking at these heroes of faith, when you're looking at the hall of faith, one thing you must understand is that they were jacked up too. 
Oh, they, oh, they had a little drama in their life, and, they, and that wasn't a reason to stop running. And so when we look at weight and when we look at sin, we got to understand that a lot of us are really good at letting go, but not a lot of us are good at taking off. I'm going to say that again. A lot of us are really good at letting stuff go, but not a lot of us are good at taking it off. See, so you got to take it off to be the new man or the new woman. You got to take it off to see the righteousness of Christ. But here's what a lot of us do. Uh, uh, we look at it and we say, yeah, uh, you know, Patrice, I'm going to need you to let that anger go. Okay, well, Jesus, anger, I can do that. No problem. Uh-huh. I got some stuff in here, too. It's going to mess with y'all. Uh, let's see. Anger, anger, anger. Um, yep, Jesus, I got a DVD on that. I let it go. But I'm gonna take the rest of this stuff with me, amen. <laughs> See, I'm I, I I'm I, I'm not like y'all. I'm not like y'all. My bag is packed, amen. I know y'all are holy, so y'all only got one thing in it. If you you could just let it go, and this is just extra. It ain't even nothing in here. There's nothing in here. Then God says, Rashid, I need you to take off some anger, or or young people, I I, I need you to take some stuff off of your Snapchats. I didn't like social media, no way. <laughs> but the problem is we keep letting go of stuff instead of taking it off. And we wonder why our race is hindered. Because we're just letting go of stuff. And then we look at it and we see it says he makes a distinction between weight and sin. There's a distinction, weight and sin. That tells us that the weight may not necessarily be a sin. <laughs> There's some things that we have in our lives, and I know I'm not just preaching to myself, that aren't necessarily bad to us, but it's not what it is, it's what it does to us. Amen. Some of us got some weight that's just distracting us from what our true purpose is, so we can't get there because we always have to deal with the weight. I got to learn how to take it off. Somebody say, take it all the way off. Yeah, see, you know, he uses the metaphor uh, of a race, and yeah, you got to understand, how many people have you seen show up to a track meet with a trench coat on? Just a visual. You don't show up at a race with all kind of clothes and all kind of weight on, because it's going to do what? Slow you down. Young people, I ask you on today, what is slowing you down? What do you like but you won't let go of and therefore you can't get closer to the dream that you keep proclaiming? Some stuff you got to let go of. See, see, there's an interesting distinction when he talks about weight and sin. Weight versus sin, weight versus sin. And it was messing me up because I was thinking, I was like, well, you know, sin, that's pretty obvious. But God, how does weight and sin, how does that fit together? And he said, yeah, well, you know, it's just like, you know, I'm going to mess with y'all real quick because y'all are in high school. Somebody in here had the weight of wanting to be a comedian, amen? You had to, because you want to be the funny man, you know, because, you know, you might have had weight in your life where you were made fun of. Stay with me. So you learn to be the comedian. And, and, and at first you were just being the comedian and now you're cussing. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just messing with you a little bit. I know nobody in here is cussing after being a comedian. Some of y'all get caught up to where you want to be in a relationship. Amen? Yeah. And that's your problem. Relationships are your weight. You are a serial person as it relates to falling in love or needing somebody with you. I know the adults don't want to look at me, so I'm just going to look at y'all because the adults never have those problems. But then relationships turn into relations. I'm keeping it as gentle Oh, y'all want to take it high level? Let's, let, let, let's take it high level. You got a burden for wanting to be a leader, amen? You got a burden for wanting to be in charge, amen? And now all of a sudden you're just prideful and bossy. I'm just saying. How weight can turn into sin, amen? You know, some, 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 some brothers in here, and I know, I know all the, everybody, all the adults, we're holy, we're, we wear suits now. We don't do those things anymore. So we're just talking to the high school kids and to the younger folks. Some of us wanted to be the tough guy. Some of us wanted to be the fighter. 
Looked up, and next thing you know, somebody's involved in gangs and got guns. I'm just saying how weight... Oh, come on now. Okay, okay, okay. That's for the fellas. For the ladies, some of y'all just wanted to wear a little makeup, right? It was all about looking good. Mm-hmm. Now you're posting pics on social media. I think they call them thirst traps. See the young, see the, you see, you see all the, the adults went, thirst trap, I don't get it. I don't know what a thirst trap is. And the young people went, oh my gosh, he's in our stuff. Girl, it's finna be lit up in here. It's finna be lit. It's gonna be lit up in, cause they, he doesn't supposed to know about that. How's he know about a thirst trap? Lay aside, take it off. I feel free. I feel like I can run a little bit, amen? Because I don't have all this weight with me no more. I'm not carrying around all this sin. Now I can run. Well, let's look at what he says. I don't want to go too far outside of what the Bible's saying and preach the gospel of Rashid because that's not what this is about. He says, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run. With perseverance, with endurance. Some of your translations say per perseverance. My translation says endurance. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Amen? Yeah. The race to run with endurance, the race, the test that's set before you. How many know anything worth having is worth working for? Yeah. Right, right. So... If you have a dream, if you have a passion, if you have a purpose, you're going to have to put the work in. You're going to have to persevere. Let me give you a little historical cultural context as it relates to what was going on in the setting of this particular scripture. The author of Hebrews is speaking to an audience of Jewish Christians. Amen? Most likely in Rome, most likely in Rome, um, but they were having some issues with the Christian journey. Amen? Amen? Uh, 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 there was some, Ju some Judaistic legalism, I'll bring that down for you, that was going on um, as it related to their journey, and they, and they were getting fed up. They were getting fed up with, with, with the Christian journey because there were so many trials, so many tribulations with accepting Jesus. Amen? There was always somebody that was telling them, you got to go back to these old religious ways. You got to go back and you, 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 you got to shave your head. And there's certain things you got to do as it relates to the meat that's unclean. And, and, and the things that you got to do, they were jumping over so many hoops and obstacles that they were thinking about turning back. I, I, I know that's none of us in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, I know nobody in this crowd has gotten sick of traditional Christianity. I'm sorry, I'm just telling you what I was reading and then it came out. No, 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 nobody's sick of all the hoops and the obstacles that some people tell you you gotta jump through just so you can get closer to Jesus. Nobody's sick of some of the rituals, some of the things that we tell you you gotta go through so that you can understand who Jesus is. And you consider turning back. I remember being young, and I, and I, I what I couldn't stand the worst, y'all forgive me, I'm not going to look at the adults. What I couldn't stand more than anything else was people telling me, hey, you got to do this, you got to do that. This is wrong. That's wrong. X, Y, and Z. And then I turn around and see them doing the same thing they told me not to do. <sighs> Sometimes it made me want to turn around. It made the journey harder. So, so, so when we're looking at it, you got to understand there's going to be some trials. There's going to be some tribulations. There's going to be some things that you got to overcome. Let me say it to you like this. When he says, therefore, let us run, there's, there, it seems to be that he's talking about two different types of people. You got one set of people that ain't even in the race. Somebody know what I'm talking about. The spectators. I can't stand the peanut gallery. Y'all forgive me for a minute. The peanut, they want to tell you, hey, you ain't running fast enough. You're not even on the track. Tell me, my lungs is burning, my legs is wobbly, and you got the nerve. Tell me you're not. But he's telling those people, look, if you're not in the race, get in. And I would say that to you all on today, especially to the young people. If you're not in the race, it's time to get in. 
We got a cloud of witnesses that are encouraging us. We got a cloud of people that, were, that had drama in their lives and had stuff going on, but they didn't let that make them give up. They kept the faith and they kept on running. So some of y'all need to hear that. The second part of the group of people were people that were in the race and they were just like the folks we're talking about now. They wanted to turn back or they got tired in the race. Their lungs were burning. Their legs were wobbly. So you know what they did? Any of y'all start jogging? Stop playing. Stop playing. Some of y'all said you was going to run a mile and you ran about half a block and got to jump. <laughs> got to... Help me, Father. Uh, you got to jogging? Talking about you still doing it. <laughs> Amen? Some, some, some of y'all stopped jogging and got to walking fast. I'm just going to walk. I'm going to get this mile, Jesus. I'm going to get the whole mile. That's, that's a thousand steps. That's good enough. Uh, you get to jogging and get to walking. And then some of y'all, plain and simple, just sit down. Now all of a sudden I'm running the track and I got hurdles. Where did this come from? I got to jump over a Christian that quit. I'm just saying. the adults let's not be the obstacles and the hurdles amen they shouldn't have to jump over us because we quit they shouldn't have to jump over us because we gave up they shouldn't have to jump over us because it got too hard no we should be just like them heroes in the hall of faith and we should be an encouraging example So young people, as it relates to that dream, as it relates to that promise, as it relates to what's on the inside of you that's making you run, that's making you want to keep staying in the race, that's making you want to keep going, let me say something to you. Key point here, don't quit something that God has every intention of you finishing. Don't you quit something that God wants you to finish. I say that to the people that are in the audience. Don't you quit something that God wants you to finish. You talking about ministry done got hard, so you done gave up your calling. God had every intention on you finishing that. He wants you to finish. So let me ask you the question. What are you thinking about giving up on? What have you given up on? That's to the young people, that's to everybody in the audience. What, 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 what trial and what tribulation in life has you feeling like you're ready to give up and it just ain't worth it no more? What are you looking at giving up on? What have you given up on? But the point becomes, keep walking with God no matter what it looks like. You think David thought he was going to be who he turned out to be with the Bathsheba situation sitting in the back of his mind? But he didn't give up. He kept on running. Please forgive me for this, but I got to say this. It's a key point that I found. A commentator um, wrote this as, as it related to when I was doing my exegetical work, and it jacked me up. It really, really jacked me up as it related to a race. Because when I think of races, I think of winning, I think of competition, I think of sprinting. But this brother said, nothing makes less sense than being in a race that you don't want to win. Nothing makes less sense than being in a race that you know you have no intentions on winning. So you jumped in this thing knowing you was going to quit. I have done that in my life. I was the home-based business king. Ain't made no money. She's right there. She's right there. But I, but, but, but I kept getting into races. I had no intentions on winning. I just wanted the benefits without uh, uh, the, the work, without the perseverance. I just wanted to get something out of it and get out of it quick. And a lot of us end up in races. We don't have intentions on winning. Talk about you want to be a football player. You're 102 pounds. It just ain't not going... Just saying. Talking about you going to win and swimming in the Olympics. You scared of the water. Come on, man. 
Why you go buy all that swimwear? <laughs> I could go deeper, but God said keep moving. Because uh, <laughs> that one, uh, that, that was pretty tough. Uh, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's keep moving. I'm almost done. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus. Look, look, look at what he tells you. Uh, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus. That is my point of reference. That's who I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm not supposed to be looking at anybody else. Even though you may love me, even though you may have the best intentions for me, you can still distract me from my goal. You ever see a race when somebody's running and they look behind them? Most times they get caught because it slows you down. You ever been in a race and start worrying about where everybody else was at? Stop playing with me, people, today. Come on now. That's what a lot of us in our lives look like right now. We are in a race called life, and we're looking around at what everybody else is doing, and that's what distracts us the most. I'm worried about what Mary Sue got. I'm worried about what Billy got. I'm worried about what so-and-so is doing, and I'm trying to please and appease them, and I'm missing the one I'm supposed to be looking at. Where you look is important. He's our example because he's done it before. There's nothing better than being around somebody that's done it before. Young people, if I can give you a word, if there's a race that you're running, if there's something you want to do and you feel like you're having problems getting to it, find somebody that's already completed it. Find somebody that's already done it and then model that. But look at Jesus. Let me say this to you as well. We're not just running for pleasure. Amen? Some of us, that's, that, that's what we're doing. We're running for pleasure. We're running for different things to come into our lives that God may not necessarily want us to have. We're not running for pleasure. If you don't have something to look for, forward to, you won't last long. You got to have something to look forward to. It says in this text, looking unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, the founder and perfecter of our faith, the author of it. He's the one that, that, that started this faith walk. He's the one that completed it. He's the one that can say it is finished. We're not at that point yet, but he was the founder and the perfecter of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him? What was his joy? I believe it was returning back to the father, being able to say it is finished. He was looking to be exalted. He was looking to be raised back up. He was looking to sit at the right hand of the throne of God because he completed the race. Endured the cross. Despising the shame. Despising the shame in the Greek. When we look at that particular phrase, it's almost as if it's saying that Jesus looked at it as if it was irrelevant. Y'all didn't hear me. This is a man that was beaten. This is a man that was whipped. This is a man that was bruised. This is a man that was mocked. This was a man that went through more H-E double hockey sticks than most of us can ever think of. And the fact of the matter is, because of the joy that was set before him, because of him wanting you and me in this building, he looked at it as it was irrelevant. Yeah, so somebody in here, young people, old people, people, I'm young. Imagination. Amen. Um, We got to understand that the pain, the trials, the tribulations, the stuff that we're going through to get to our, our purpose, to get to our goal, we got to look at it as it is, as is if, if it's irrelevant. This ain't going to stop me. This will not be the reason why I start jogging. This will not be the reason why I start walking. This will not be the reason why I start sitting down. Why? Because I took it off. So anything else that you can do to me is irrelevant. Why? Because I'm looking to hear well done. I want to get to that place where Jesus says, well done, good and faithful servant. I'm looking for that, not at what you can tell me. So don't stop running. As I bring it to a close, here's the question. Here's the question. We're in a race. We're running. You've been instructed to take off weights to take off sin, to run with endurance, with perseverance. And the question becomes, preacher, it sounds good. I love everything you said, but what happens if I'm already off course? 
What happens if I'm already off track? What happens if I'm already uh, feeling marginalized? What happens if I'm already sitting down? How do I course correct? How do I get back on track? And the answer is in the scripture where it says we must look to Jesus. Look at Jesus. He is the example. He is the answer. When you're off track, when you feel like I'm losing in the race, I'm missing my destiny, I'm not getting to the place I want to be at. Pastor, I'm, 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 I'm in a place where I'm confused or I'm allowing myself to be tempted by things I shouldn't be tempted by. The point is, turn your focus back and look at the cross. Look at the man that completed it for us. Hallelujah. And know that he'll complete it for you. The point is, you have to remember, don't stop running. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're thankful on today. Come on, please stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Some, somebody in this place is considering giving up. Somebody in this place is considering to stop running the race. Somebody's thinking about turning around and turning back. And I'm here to encourage you today, don't stop running. Give it everything you've got. Take off the weight. Let go of the sin. Understand the fact that even if you mess up, so did the people that are in the halls of faith. Don't let that distract you. Keep on running. Keep the faith Stay obedient to what God has called you to do and he that began a good thing in you shall carry it on to completion. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Pastor, come on, let's do this.